everybody. I'm here with a video I think I should have made probably a year ago. Uh, there were some components of it that I thought about, never got around to it. And then I was talking to Chris Spots, the Spotted Painter. Shout out to Chris, great guy. Um, by the way, excellent painter, excellent commission work. If you need commission work on painting for minis or Kickstarter or anything like that, he is your guy. Don't overload him with work though, because I need him to work on my Kickstarter too. But he's an awesome guy, and if people don't know, he's also an expert in 3D printing. And him and I discuss 3D printing, resins, the machines, all, all different aspects of 3D printing all the time, um, because we're friends. So uh, when I was talking to Chris about some video ideas, he actually helped me uh, get this one going, I'll say, and come up with some ideas for the video in addition to what I had been thinking about. So shout out to Chris. So you see it's a little messy because I've actually been doing some painting, which I don't often get time for. So have a little time to paint, interrupting my own painting to make this video about how to preserve your FEP. So in there, I'm going to give a mini tutorial on how to best clean your vat, or at least how I do it, which you may or may not agree is the best way, but I know that it works well for me, so maybe it'll help you. So first, let's talk about uh, the FEP. We know if this gets scratched up or cloudy too much, uh, it's gonna start to affect your print. If it gets scraped up, dimpled up too much, whatever, it could eventually rupture, causing resin leaks, or you get a small pinhole leak, which is also bad, get resin on your screen, up to, I've seen, it hasn't happened to me, but I've seen other people on Facebook have gotten some catastrophic leaks, basically from ripping the FEP. So let's talk about how not to do that, how to preserve this FEP for as long as possible. So the first thing is, and I don't want to talk about this so I don't forget about it at the end when I get into cleaning the vat. I actually think some people, punctures from FEPs could come from the build plate itself. And the reason I say that is because this has almost happened to me. When you clean that build plate off, and I don't know, everyone probably does it a little differently. For me, after I remove my print, okay, and anyway, let's talk about this first too, sorry. I'm going to interrupt myself to interrupt myself. Plastic scraper. Now, I've been unboxing tons of printers for you guys and doing reviews for a long time. And I always say it's plastic scraper, metal scraper, whatever. But what I should have been saying, and I was a little remiss in not doing this, I feel now. This goes in the garbage for me because I'm not going to use it to remove prints. It's just not strong enough. You should be using something that has like a razor edge and is, is metal and is solid. Not even the flimsy ones they give you, which are these. These also go in the garbage for me. This to me is is it's just not firm enough if you get a print that's really stuck on or a heavier print i find this hard to use i mean it's not terrible but it's definitely not as good as something like this which is really strong or i, I have another scraper which is a razor blade inserted at the end of one of these so it's even even finer to get really under something that's stuck on but this plastic one i don't use it to get prints off and i would never ever use this on the fep the average one you get if you run your finger across it even now, I can feel there's a little bump here, and that might be from when, when, when it comes out of the mold or however they make it. But if you ran this across your FEP, you're going to scrape up your FEP. So please, if anyone's using these on your FEP, throw it out. Okay. What you should be using, and I'll, I'll go over this again in the cleaning section, is silicon. Nice, flexible silicon, which is easy to clean resin off of, and very smooth, flexible and will not damage your FEP. I use a big one on my big vats and a little one on my little vats, and I'll show you what I do. And I'll also, um, I'll have a link to the ones I use or ones like the ones I bought. I don't know if they, you know, if they're still sold by whoever sold them. I just got them off Amazon. So I'll, I will try to link everything I'm talking about just to make it easier on you um, if you want to use it. So let's, now that we talk about, do not use this on your FEP ever. And again, I think you should just throw these out, actually. Um, but the other thing I was going to talk about is, and again, I don't know what other people I'm doing. I'm going to tell you what I do. When I take my build plate off, I scrape my print off. We usually onto a bunch of paper towels before I wash it. And then what I do is I visually inspect the plate to make sure that no part of the uh, support structure bases is left on there. Sometimes you can have a little piece of base can be on there. So if there's anything, I just make sure I've scraped everything off. And then what I do is, and I have gloves on when I'm doing this. I, I bought gloves to wear in the video, but my hands will get hot and sweaty 
And uh, I figured, <laughs> let's just pretend I'm wearing the gloves. Oh, if you can find gloves that complement or even match your shirt is good. Orange goes with the red. Anyway, so what I do is I scrape my print off onto a paper towel. I have another paper towel handy. And again, with my gloved hand, I visually inspect, make sure I don't see anything left on that plate as best I can see. I then take the bill plate, turn it so the print size down, and run it along the paper towel. I wipe all the resin off the bottom of that bill plate. Then I inspect it again and make sure that there's nothing left there. What can happen is, and I fear that what happens to some people, some little piece of the support material when they go to scrape a print off might remain there. They maybe give a quick wipe and don't check. When that goes back on, that little piece, when it presses down for the first layer, can puncture your FEP. So I think that's what happens to some people. The other thing that I've seen that, that has happened to me, and I believe I've caught it every time so far, is if you do what I do, which is wipe the bottom of that plate, what I've also seen happen for me personally is a little piece of the, of the cured resin, so let's just call plastic, a little piece of plastic, when I'm wiping, can get wiped onto the side of that build plate. Then you look at the bottom, you don't see it, you attach the bill plate. When it goes into the resin, that little piece of plastic suddenly is floating in your resin. Plate goes up, the resin moves in, that little piece of plastic moves in. When your plate comes back down, punctured FEP. So what I do is, aside from cleaning the bottom very carefully before I put that bill plate back on a machine, I look really quickly at all the sides and make sure nothing is stuck there. Even because sometimes I, the way I wipe it on paper towel, it is possible, I think there are times I've used paper towels that I have around, there could be something else on there already and that could get onto the build plate on the sides when I'm wiping the top. So you really wanna make sure you inspect your build plate very carefully before reattaching it to your printer. Because I think, from what I've seen on Facebook and the accidents I've seen people have, I think a lot of it might have to do with not cleaning either the bottom of the build plate properly after a print or getting something on the side or top that you don't see and then it goes back in, gets loose in your resin, and, and that's what punctures the FEP for some people. The other thing is an FEP could rip or tear from suction force, um, but it only does that if it's damaged already usually. Hence, why well, I don't want you using stuff like this. So if your FEP is not damaged in any way, it should not rip or tear, right? So I think most of those cases, people have damaged the FEP somehow without realizing, and then they get their rip or tear. So I think making sure you have no small particles of cured resin or of any foreign substance on your build plate before it goes back in your resin is key. Mm -hmm. Now, on top of that, let's talk about cleaning to make sure uh, when you go to clean your vat, you end up with a nice pristine vat with no cured resin left in there in any way, shape, or form. So after a fail, okay, uh, which we all hate, cleaning the vat's the worst thing, first thing we need to do, we have our gloves on, remember. Take that vat out. Now, before I take it out, I want to be prepared. So I get plenty of paper towels, and what I do is I rip a bunch of them so I have them piled up one at a time so I don't have to rip them in case I only have one free hand. Which, as you know, when you're handling stuff, sometimes you only have one free hand. So I pile up a bunch of paper towels. Okay. I put my funnel into my resin bottle where I'm pouring the resin. I take my strainer. Now, this may sound goofy, but you have to make sure you really unfold the fold, you know, fold hard the other way. Because if you're if you're if you're strainer, were, I've had this happen to me once. That's how I know. And ever since then, it's never happened again. My my funnel was not. I didn't press hard enough, so it started reshaping back to the this flat thing, and it was a mess. So I make sure I fold the opposite way nicely, so my funnel is going to maintain shape, um, and then I stick it in. Now you see how wobbly this is. Now the funnel I use is not the most stable. So when I go to pour in, I normally with my other gloved hand hold this just to make sure. Once I get some resin in there and there's some weight, it's fine. So you might say, well, you should use a better funnel. I haven't needed to. It hasn't really caused me any problems because I hold it. Now, when you pour, if you're like me, if you pour too fast, what happens is resin also comes over the sides and comes start dripping down the side. So I've made that mistake more than once. So that, that's a big pain. If you don't angle enough when you start to pour, it runs down here and then onto the bottom of your FEP, which is also a pain because you know you're gonna have to clean it. So I always keep a paper towel handy and if I don't get the pour angle right and I notice it dripping, I kind of lift up and I don't do that. And I uh, I just get my paper towel there because I don't want, I don't, I really don't want to clean it out of all there, you know, like that. So you have to pour kind of at the right. Now, I know people have drip, um, drip holders, to, right, tank holders, drip. 
I don't do that because I'm in too much of a rush. I don't want to let it sit there. So what I do is I pour out as much as I can at, at a good angle. Okay, when I get most of the resin out, I then, again, gloved hands, I take my squeegee, I squeegee everything down toward the pour spout. Then I tilt it a little bit and squeegee it down toward the pour spout. Then I pour it again. Once I do that, wiping any drips, I have a I have a vat that's almost empty of resin. Now, around the very outside, there's still a little bit of resin left, usually, and on the walls and stuff like that. So the next thing I do, and I know everyone says, and I've even said it, don't use paper towels on your FEP. It ruins your FEP. Truth. Can you use them in a limited capacity? Yes, and I do. So what I do is, now I have a vat that's 95% clean, just a little bit of stuff on the outside. Now for some people, if you know there's no particles in there, that's clean enough. If you've, if you've, if you had a failed print, first thing I, sorry, if there's a failed print, first thing I do is I hold my vat and there's a failed print in there. I push from here, push up a little bit on the FEP so an edge pops up. Now with my other gloved hand, I can just peel it off and throw it, um, in, I have a thing that I take out to cure. So I throw it in a little like tub thing. And that's where the paper towels go that I'm about to tell you about. So I cure everything before I actually throw it out. So get my print off, right? And the next thing I do is I, I squeegee out that resin. Now, I still have this ring of resin around here. I'm a little bit anal about this. So instead of just saying, oh, that looks good enough, I'm, I'm always paranoid that there could be some cured resin left on the outside there in, in those drops. And I don't want that puncturing my FEP. That's what we're talking about. So I want to make sure my vat is crystal clear at the end. So what I do is I take my IPA, alcohol, 99% alcohol. I pour in just about a capful. And I just kind of swish it around a little bit. Now, here's where I take the paper towel. You all know, if you look in, you can even see it on a vat that's been used. The print area is about, I don't know, different for different printers. Say 85 or 90% of the actual vat size, right? The, the build plate has to fit in. So let's say it's 90%. So to me, that means it's safe to, once I have that IPA in there, I can actually wipe around the very outside like this. My paper towel is not touching the print area at all. The part of the FEP that the light has to go through is not being touched. I will not touch that with a paper towel. So I use this to clean the stubborn resin that's clinging to the edges. I get most of that off. And then I pour in IPA again, swirl around again, get a fresh paper towel, crumple it all up, do the same thing all around the outside, make sure there's no resin left. When that's done, I then pour in another layer of IPA I take a microfiber cloth. I buy a huge bunch of them from Costco. You can buy them in bulk on Amazon or almost any store. You can get microfiber cloths. You can get big ones that are used for automobiles and cut them up. You can get small ones, whatever you want. So after I have that looking 99% clean, I put a thin layer of the IPA. And then with my microfiber, I come in and I wipe everywhere. Now's the time you can wipe the middle because the microfiber will not damage it. I also, after that's done, put a few drops of IPA on the bottom side, because just in the handling, I'm always afraid, either I've gotten my finger, uh, well, I have the gloves on, so I shouldn't say fingerprints, but sometimes I have resin on the gloves, and I'm handling it, so I get resin on the bottom. So, and you know, even if I can't see it, just to make sure, a few drops of IPA on the bottom, and then the microfiber cloth, and now the vat is absolutely perfectly clean, should be pristine. Again, if you get a couple little scratches on the outside from using the paper towel, that's not in the printable area. It won't affect anything. And that's why I use paper towels on the edges because it's a little better at getting up the resin when there's kind of more of it. Um, you take all those paper towels and anything you discard it from the failed print and your funnel, not funnel, the strainer, those you put in either on a silicon mat is good or, a, or a, a plastic container, put it out in the sun, cure it all before you throw it out, make sure you're not throwing out live resin, okay? Uh, the gloves go there too, to be cured. Now I've got the perfectly clean vat. To be extra safe, because I wipe mine with IPA on the bottom also, and even if you don't, you could get moisture there somehow, whether it's resin, whatever, whatever, your saliva, I don't know. Whatever's there, you do not want to put any any moisture at all between this film and the glass. If you do, you will create suction. You do not want your FEP with a layer of moisture between it and the glass. That is bad juju. Next time you go to pull that 
If you've seen any of the stories on Facebook or Reddit of people removing their vat and pulling up their glass with it or breaking something or the vat ripping, that's because probably they have moisture between the FEP and, and the glass and it creates a suction. So what I do is after I'm done cleaning that vat, I turn it over. So this is the side that I wipe the glasses off, the side that's going to be basically in touch with my, with my uh, screen. And I turn it over, and even though the IPA evaporates very quickly, I let it sit for at least 15 minutes. I make sure it's bone dry. And then before I put it on, I get a new microfiber cloth, totally dry new cloth. And I just, even though I know it's dry, I give it just a gentle wipe down. That I inspect it to make sure there's no fuzz, no dirt, no lint on either side. If there is, I wipe again until it's gone. Now I'm ready to put it back in my machine and start printing. So the moral of the story here is I think if you're very careful with your FEP, I think A, it'll last a really long time because without making any of those kind of mistakes of having cured resin somehow getting pressed into it, either from your build plate, from on top of the build plate, uh, from not cleaning the vat properly, from whatever it is, FEP should last a really long time. I have, I think, and I keep saying FEP, you guys know I, I should be saying NFEP. I, I always use NFEP in, in my machines. Uh, for me, it works better. I, I don't think it really compares to regular FEP. So I should have been saying NFEP this whole time when I'm talking about what I do. Um, I, I, have, I have these NFEPs. It's in, I think in all four of my Sonic Mini 4Ks, I don't think I've changed uh, an NFEP in like six to eight months maybe now and they print flawlessly. There's no, and I did clean one of those vats recently because I was testing a resin and it failed. And when I cleaned it out, the FEP looked, looked beautiful to me. So I think if you really take care of it, they'll last a long time. I mean, your mileage may vary, you know, but I think if you take care of it, clean it the right way, make sure you're very careful about, about your build plate always being clean when it goes back on the machine as well. Uh, you shouldn't have any of these FEP leaks or tears or anything like that if you do everything carefully and properly and and never never use anything like this on your FEP, please. Like the worst thing you can do, and when I, by the way, when I use paper towels, let me be clear about this, even though I only use on the very outside where it won't affect print quality, I'm not like jamming it down. I'm, I'm lightly pushing it in to make sure I get you know, the resin out that kind of like clings to the, to, to the outside rim. Um, you know, you don't want to push too hard on that either because you'll start stretching it out. So that's it. That's how I clean my vat. But I also want to just talk about, you know, making sure that you're not going to damage your FEP by the way you're handling stuff. And remember, always wear your gloves when you're doing all this stuff because as you guys know, who anyone who works with resin has a way of getting everywhere anyway. Even with the gloves, I sometimes find resin on my arm or whatever. So uh, you have to be careful. And then make sure you dispose of, if you use, do like I do and use a lot of the paper towels, uh, the gloves, make sure you take that stuff and either cure it in your curing chamber or put it outside in the sun and make sure that that resin is not what I call live, not active. Um, so you're not polluting the environment when you throw it out. And that's it. So I hope this guy's helped you out in, in any little way even would make me happy. And uh, happy 3D printing.